Hello and welcome to another episode of the Smarter Tech Podcast. My name is Nick, the ENF guy, Pino, and this is Smarter Tech. Uh, please listen to the video version of that bra of that uh, podcast if you can, because today is going to be a little bit of a demonstration. I'm going to unbox my Mudita phone, and I want to give some context because not everyone is aware of Mudita. Uh, M-U-D-I-T-A, in case you're uh, just uh, looking for it. And I'm going to share a few times my screen here on the video version, uh, if that can help. I want to talk about the company because, um, you know, I've been inspired by seeing this tech startup that is focused on health. Uh, there are very, very few tech startups that create phones. Um, I should have mentioned that Mudita is a phone. It's a, it's a dumb phone, if you will, a very modern version of a phone that is minimalist in its scope. And uh, basically, it is a startup that, uh, a startup company, Mudita, that, that, is, that is focused on health um, and the health of users. And in a world where a lot of phone manufacturers uh, or inventors of the iPhone, for example, there's several uh, engineers that have admitted after, let's say a decade or more after their invention that they regret having invented their invention because everyone's addicted to their phone or they regret how they uh, by design create uh, created uh, algorithms or a certain uh, certain functions of the phone to make it more addictive on purpose to maximize how much time people spend on their device. But then it works so great that they see that and they see how damaging it is to society. You know, uh, so in a world where a lot of corporations don't care. I find it very nice to find a few corporations that are emergent and that might be very disruptive to the tech space and to how phones in the future are uh, designed with health in mind, with features that focus on health. So uh, I'm motivated to talk about the company. Uh, I'm not even affiliated with the company uh, at this point. I did uh, participate in their Kickstarter campaign. And this is how the project, I heard of the project first. In the fall of 2019, Mudita launched a, kick a Kickstarter campaign. And I should have done a better research. I think it was funded for hundreds of thousands, if not a million dollars. I cannot recall the amount, but it was substantial. I really doubt that they, they recouped all of their costs with the community, but it probably help them to get some cash flow going because when you look at the company there's quite a few people that work at Mudita and that need to be paid and that was years before it even launched so for sure it is uh, probably quite an investment to uh, create a tech startup and then creating a phone from scratch with their own operating system for example uh, must be well I, I saw how <laughs> the development of the Kickstarter uh, ended up uh, let's say facing a lot of uh, problems uh, or challenges um, is more accurate um, because creating a phone is no easy task especially when you do everything custom so the CEO of uh, Mudita is uh, Michel uh, K uh, Kikinski uh, and basically what happened, what happened with, uh, Michel is that he started working on his health after burning, burning out and he discovered that it was affected by EMFs. Uh, there's a post on that I'm going to put in the, in the show notes for this episode or underneath the video on the YouTube and, uh, BitChute, um, and hopefully other platforms in the future too. Uh, so he was affected by EMFs and um, I don't think I initially need to share my screen on this, uh, but basically he tells his story of how he realized that, you know, holding a phone, for example, was causing problems for him, uh, tingling sensation and things like that. He also mentioned uh, headaches, for example, and headaches uh, are, I don't know why I cannot pronounce, <laughs> pronounce it right, headaches. Oh, okay, that's a bit better. Um, so 
e e got those and for some people it's uh, straight up migraines that are linked with cell phone use and for some people it might be even the use of wi-fi for example so it's it's really your you you um, for I guess for people who do get headaches uh, on their phone, it's very easy for them to uh, realize that uh, it's causation. I use the phone, uh, I get pain in my head, <laughs> right? I don't use it, I don't get pain. So sometimes it's it's as simple as that, but basically he found out that he was slightly electrosensitive and it, it, it kind of inspired him to uh, create this startup. Uh, so the Mudita phone... What is cool about it, and I'm going to show you a few things here and just ensure that in front of the camera it looks good. Basically, it comes with, uh, oh, it's going to blur everything. It's not ideal. So there's uh, the Mudita Pure Cover. Uh, there's the phone inside. And basically, it looks like this, uh, the, the box that is. Uh, very minimalistic, I must say, uh, which is kind of the Apple-style design, uh, which is... I, I like it personally, very minimalist. And then the phone inside looks like this. So it does look, you know, the feel is good. It does not feel cheap. It feels like uh, the phone, the Samsung phone that I first had. My first dumb phone was was a Samsung that looked like this, probably in, I don't know, in uni days, I guess, like 2006. I don't know exactly when I decided to have my first phone, but um, of course I was not EMF aware at the time, so I probably did everything wrong. But anyway, um, so that's how it looks. Uh, it retails for at the moment, I, I took notes on this, $369 USD, so around a bit over 400 uh, Canadian dollars plus I guess, plus taxes and shipping, whatnot. So, I mean, if we look at the pricing, uh, I don't know how this compares to the very recent phones, but it's, it's probably half of certain smartphones. Um, so iPhone, what is it? iPhone 13 retail price? Is it at, is it the, the 13, the last version? You know how, mu how much I'm, uh, I'm aware of these prices? I'm not. So I'm just looking at the comparable phones um, from $600 for the Apple uh, Apple ter uh, iPhone 13 mini. The regular is $699. So you see, still, pricing could be a reason why you want to get a minimalist, uh, a minimalist phone like this because it's about half price compared to smartphones. Of course, it, this is only logical since the smartphone, the smartphone has fancy cameras and, and different things like that. The minimalistic phone does not have most of these options. So it does not have a camera that I can see. Uh, it just has basically the phone capabilities and then a few other capabilities that are very basic, like doing calls. Um, you can use uh, texting as well, but not, not much else. You can do calls, texting, and what else? Contacts. So it's a very, very minimalistic approach to distractions. So if you're looking for, let's say, a dumb phone, but you don't want to purchase, let's say, a dinosaur phone that uh, is the, the older models of flip phones. Uh, well, Mudita could be a good option. You can, uh, it's, it's fully unlocked, so you can just insert your SIM card in there and, and then use it anywhere, basically. There are other reasons why I like this, and I took avid notes of basically what features are in my mind a little bit healthier than most smartphones out there. One of them is an e-ink display. And e-ink, what is uh, special is that there's basically no backlight to it. So the, um, the possibility that this disrupts your circadian rhythm or that it, it, it can cause eye strain, for example, compared to smartphones is quite low. Uh, the blue light emissions are, are very, very minimalistic also, uh, pun intended. Uh, so it is something that I think is very valuable that you've got some phone manufacturers that start changing their displays. 
you know, we know that excessive blue light emission, especially the intensity, also the flicker, also the the percentage of blue light in displays has been going up and up and up. And we know that it can it is linked with macular degeneration, but also circadian rhythm disruption, which means that if you look at your phone too much during the day, and especially as the day evolves and goes towards the sun goes down and colors becomes warmer in nature. If you look at a bright phone, you're essentially uh, causing jet lag because your body is tricked into thinking that it's uh, you're looking at uh, a bright sun when you're looking at your phone. So that's the idea. It can prevent proper sleep. It can um, prevent you from winding down at night, keep your nervous system revved up. So. It's a good idea to have these e-ink displays. Um, I would like to see that on more phones, to be honest. But of course, if you have e-ink, you don't have the smartphone capabilities like looking at pictures or uh, videos, for example. But it is really a different mentality compared to smartphones that are going towards 4K and 5K video and like those extreme high resolutions and also the 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 brightness and the resolution is getting better and better and more intense so it's really the opposite of that so i, I like it there's also a flashlight on there with a warmer color option uh, that is in my mind way more appropriate for uh evening or nighttime use uh, in fact there should be a flashlight that is red on there and i would love seeing phones in the future that have a red light instead of just the very extreme bright light of the iphone that is just stupidly intense and white there should be at least a filter that you can put on there um so maybe a and a, a kind of led that you can change that, that has variety in, in the color options on there. So I hope that Apple comes around and has a, a, a warmer flashlight in the future. Um, one thing on an EMF standpoint that is very important, of course, we talked about the light EMFs, but also the wireless radiation emissions that are emitted by this phone are um, what they claim is basically the lowest SAR phone ever created. SAR is specific absorption rate, and that's a measurement of how much heat is, um, well, let's say, it's it's putting it a little bit um, sim simplistically, but on purpose, let's say it's how much heat the phone emits. In reality, it's how much is absorbed by a unit of uh, tissue on your body, but not to get too technical, but that measurement is I was talking with Brian Hoyer, my colleague at Shielded Healing lately, and we both agreed that, you know, we can compare one phone to another and say, okay, well, the SAR of phone XYZ is higher than Mudita and Mudita is lower SAR. And that's good. And it could mean that is it is slightly safer because we don't have the same intensity. But there's a few caveats here. For example, SAR is a very bad reflection of the biological effects of a phone. So it does not, SAR, it talks about heating effects, not the non-heating effects. For example, oxidative damage is not accounted for. It, um, a changing in ion, and ion channels, for example, the calcium influx that Dr. Martin Paul talks about. So is it really a useful measurement where we can say, well, lowest SAR equals more safety? It's not as simple, unfortunately. Then there's a the question of, well, if they were able to achieve what they claim is between 0 0.06 and 0 0.08 watts per kilogram SAR, uh, which is quite low compared to most phones. We're talking about many fold lower than uh, an iPhone, for example. So let's say if it emits five times less than an iPhone, and the reason that they can claim that is that they basically spent a million dollars in research and development to come up with a new antenna design that does not emit towards the user as much. And that's 
that's how I understand it. I haven't looked at there is probably a patent. Uh, there's probably a patent att attached to that, but I'm not I'm not aware of the technology. But well, first it's good news. We have a phone manufacturer that spent a million dollars to make things safer. I heard about patents being um, basically held by um, the early phone manufacturers. I it might might have been Nokia, for example. Uh, and I read those patents and they talk about shielding users from the antennas. They were never used. Why were they not used? Well, some people would claim, oh, it's an evil design. These companies want to damage users. I, I personally, if I were at a company like this, it might be as simple as it costs more to shield users. And we do not need to do it. We're not mandated to lower emissions toward users because our phones are within the quote unquote safety guidelines. So why would they shield users against something that they claim is completely safe, right? So, I mean, it, it, it's something borderline criminal now that you look at the fact that, uh, you know, science, the science around cell phone safety and, and uh, how cell phones might uh, increase risk of brain tumors, uh, how that science has been suppressed and defunded every time scientists found inconvenient results, so, positive, so negative results basically, or a strong correlation between cell phone use and brain cancer, for example. Each time the same story happened where scientists were, uh, were told, well, this is the door and uh, yeah, you don't work for us anymore because you found those results. So it's um, it's kind of yeah, I think I think it's borderline. It's gonna be found criminal in the future that behavior from uh, tech companies that probably knew about these dangers and likely just decided to ignore them. But that's a that's a story for another time. So the question uh, I digress a little bit, but the question is: Is it safe? <laughs> right? A lot of people want to know, okay, well, if I purchase the Mudita phone, can I use it safely? The answer is no. And why I say no is that at the moment, the scientific community that is independent in EMF research agrees. Um, you would be hard pressed to find people who do not agree with that statement. There's no known safe levels of EMF radiation. So in other words, the only safe level that we know of is a background level that humans have been exposed to for uh, millennia and more. Uh, and this is a quintillion times lower than the average background levels in cities at the moment. So if we reach a quintillion times lower than, or way more than that, in fact, so multiple folds lower than a, quint a quintillion, and we reach that and your phone just emits background level, then maybe we can argue it's the same intensity that we've always been exposed to on a biological or evolutionary standpoint. Maybe we could argue that it's safe if we have then the safety studies that show that it is safe. At the moment, it's not clear if you cut emissions by tenfold, does it make it safe? The science at the moment tells us it's still not safe. In, in other words, is it safer? Maybe, I would say likely, but is it safe? Not likely. That, that you can use it without any concern about your, uh, the amount of time you spend on your device or the lack, uh, the proven lack of increase in brain cancer risks, for example. So even if you have a Mudita, or even if you have the highest SCR phone on the market, it should not change your behavior. And that's kind of the very inconvenient truth because a lot of people want to say, okay, well, uh, Nick, what phone is safe? <laughs> and, the, and, and the question keeps coming back, like, can I purchase a phone where I know it's safe and now I can use it without any worry? There's no such phone on the market and Mudita is not a phone like that. It might be safer and I think it's a move in the right direction also if we start seeing manufacturers have these low EMF phones. At first, low EMF is going to be used as a marketing tool um, with, I think, 
uh, deceitful marketing tactics where users will will think, oh, well, this one is low EMF, whatever that means. You know, they could cut it in half and say 50% less radiation. And that now most users or most consumers hearing that would say, oh, wow, well, 50% safer. No, it doesn't work that way. So I think it's going to be used in a deceitful way at first, but in the future, in a few decades down the road, or sooner, hopefully, uh, it might lead to the industry changing their ways towards more safety. And at least users are gonna be more concerned about radiation being an issue. So I think, I think it's useful. On the side of the phone, you have a toggle switch. Uh, basically, you slide it, a kind of slider switch, if you will. And when you slide it, you can go to distraction-free uh, mode where it's a do not disturb. So, for example, you can set it so that only people in your close contacts or people that you decide uh, can reach you in case of emergency can reach you in those situations. So that's very useful to have a distraction-free work. Um, if you just want your, your husband or wife, your kids your dad to be able to call you in those situations, you can. So that's very nice. Then if you move that um, that slider switch a little bit down, uh, a little bit more down, you can have an airplane mode button or airplane mode uh, activation just with that slider, which I find very easy. Uh, on Apple phones, for example, now for airplane mode, you can hit the button, but you also have to make sure that the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, capabilities are turned off. So at the moment, Mudita does not have um, does not have Wi-Fi or internet capabilities. Uh, they're thinking about adding Bluetooth in the future, but I don't think it's done yet. Um, and before purchasing, please verify everything because even new versions might come out in the future after I record this video and what I'm saying might not be 100% accurate. So go to mudita.com and check it out. But at the moment, if you purchase such a phone, you also know that the only emissions you gotta worry about are, is the cellular network, which cuts, which cuts down the problem because on a smartphone you have multiple antennas. You have the Bluetooth, you have the Wi-Fi, you, you have the uh, cellular network as well. So there's like three main sources of radiation that you might be exposed to at the same time. So therefore, I might say that, I think it's safe to say that a minimalistic phone such as this one is safer by default. You have a few, let's say a lesser degree uh, of chance that you'll be exposed to multiple antennas. So better or lower SAR and then just one type of antenna. So I think other cool features that I took note of is it can become a data modem. So you can connect it via USB-C on your computer and you plug the Mudita on your computer, the Mudita will act as a router connected to, let's say the if you have an unlimited uh, bandwidth, um, um, uh, let's say, uh, reg not registration, but what I'm trying to say is uh, if you have unlimited data on your phone, it can be something useful for certain people to have a long USB-C cable run from their phone to their computer. But lately I did the same with my iPhone and found that uh, I think Apple, if I'm not mistaken, unlocked that possibility for users. And I don't know when they did it, but I know in the past it was locked on Apple products. So it's something that can likely be done with other phones as well. So it's not that exclusive to Mudita, but uh, I find that it might be something useful. And also to reduce your radiation exposure, you might have a very long cable, a USB-C cable that plugs uh, right here on Mudita. It looks like their charging cable and main uh, main cable is USB-C, which is very mo a very modern thing to do and it might plug directly on a computer and a lot of them have USB-C ports. 
including uh, the latest Apple products. I have a Razer computer on Windows and it has USB-C also. So most products are moving towards USB-C. So it's nice to see that uh, it uses that as a charging mechanism, but also as something that where you can um, synchronize the data on your a computer if you need if you need to uh, I think there are some features where you can probably export your data to your computer or even import contacts so there's probably ways that you you can interact with your computer as well but also turn your phone into a router uh, which can be useful in certain situations if you don't have access to uh, or I don't know you work outdoors for example you can turn off Wi-Fi on your computer, have a long cable, go from your Mudita phone that you set like 20 feet away, <laughs> something in, in a bag or something, and you set it very far away from you, and then you can work on your computer that will be in that case wired to the phone, right? So the cellular network goes into the phone, into the wire and on your onto your computer, and you don't have to expose yourself to Wi-Fi right in front of your computer. So you're dramatically cutting down on exposure. Uh, what I found also very valid and uh, encouraging is that they use conscious production. They try to produce as much as that phone as possible locally. So finding local components for electronics, for example, is very challenging. And um, the fact that it was some of it was outsourced to China, of course, for the electronics and to different countries, but as little of that as possible. And the, when you get into, that's not a topic where I, uh, that I'm well versed into, but when you get into how phones are manufactured and what are the environmental costs of doing so, you, could, you quickly realize that this is one of the heavy polluting activities that we're doing in this day and age because of the sheer amount of new phones that are bought every year. So it's, ve it's very daunting. Uh, are bought and trashed, I must say. So conscious production, companies that actually try to produce a product that has a lesser environmental footprint, I think this is the right direction as well. So um, I wish I had more time to do demonstrations. If there are, there are enough people interested, uh, you want me to show you the interface. I'm sure there are plenty of videos on, on mudita.com as well. But if you want me to play around with it, there's it would be something very simple. Obviously, there's no, uh, there's no Google Maps on there. There's no Instagram on there. It is a dumb phone, right? But if the use of your phone um, is, is a, a type of use that is very light, you don't use it that often. And when you do, it's for calls and texting. Uh, occasionally, then it might be the right thing for you. For electrosensitives, a lot of people will be asking me, asking me this. Well, any phone can work, but don't use it. <laughs> don't use it as much as you can. Don't use a phone. Because if you're already electrosensitive, and that varies widely what that means, but for people that are very electrosensitive, you should not be using a phone. It's it's kind of your 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 main allergy there. So at least until you get way better, you should try to minimize your phone use to the mi bare minimum. Maybe having a mudita is gonna make you feel a little bit less aggravated for the rare times you do use it as uh, as far away from your body as possible maybe the mudita you'll feel better on it but it's not the guarantee unfortunately so uh, it's not a guarantee that it's safer it's not a guarantee it's going to lead to less symptoms but i think it's a step in the right direction so please let me know in the comments um on uh, the comments on my website or uh, below on youtube what do you think do you think mudita is a good idea uh do you want demonstrations of me with the phone. I could put, uh, input my uh, SIM card on there and show you a little bit how it works. I could have the follow-up videos, but I wanted to at least talk about it and uh, show you that the phone does exist now it's being sold and also explain what are the benefits of the phone with, while staying truthful about the lack of safety of any phone at the moment, even the ones that are lower emissions. So I hope you liked it. 
And um, if you want to have more of these discussions and personal attention, I have to talk about uh, a project that I launched a few uh, months ago called the EMF Circle. You can find all the details at emfcircle.com. And it is a monthly membership with me and my colleague, Brian Hoyer, where we answer questions every month or present master classes on different topics. For example, we've had a master class just on uh, healthy lighting. Uh, we have one on healthy saunas that we published very recently, and we're going to talk about low EMF cars um, in just a few weeks. So I hope that you join us. This is uh, the community that is, let's say, for people who follow my work and want more, more personal attention, more content. And this also obviously supports my work as a self-financed uh educator and journalist. So I hope that you like this episode. I'm going to see you next time. Bye.